Hello class. Today we're going to talk about scientific notation. So we're going to learn how to convert a scientific notation number to standard notation and a standard notation number to scientific notation. The first thing we have to learn is that, that there is a particular form that we have to put scientific notation numbers in. Okay, and this is our form. We're going to have a number right here, and this number is going to be a number that is between 1 and 10. Okay, so it's going to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. Okay, so this number right here is going to be a, a, a valued number that's between 1 and 10. And then we're going to do times 10 to the, now this times 10, what it does is it moves our decimal around. If we're multiplying by with a positive exponent, it's going to move our decimal to the right. If we have a negative exponent, then it's going to be moved to the left. It's going to be a small number. So we've got two types of numbers that we're going to deal with. Okay, one are really big numbers like this one right here. Okay, so this is the number in standard form. This is the number in scientific notation. So let's find out how did we write this in scientific notation? Well, the first thing you look at in a number is you look for what we call the significant digits. And in this particular number, we have three of them. The one, eight, and four are significant digits. So we write that number down, 184. Now, I need to put a decimal in this number so that its value is between one and 10, that it's greater than or equal to one, but less than 10, okay? So could my decimal go here? No, that's 184, it's not between one and 10. Could it go here? No, that's 18.4, so it is, again, not between 1 and 10. Could my decimal go between the 1 and the 8? Yes, it could, because that means its value then would be between 1 and 10. Could it go in the front of the 1? No, because then it's less than 1. So the only place the decimal can go is between the 1 and the 8. Now, our purpose of scientific notation is to get rid of all these zeros. Okay? So what we're going to do then is write times 10 to the... Okay, so that gets rid of all those zeros, but I still need to figure out, I need this number to have the same value as this one. So now I need to figure out an exponent of how many times did I move the decimal. Okay, so we now look. So we write our significant digits, we place our decimal in our, our number so that this number is between 1 and 10, and we call this number the mantissa. And now we ask ourselves, okay, where was the decimal? Well, it was here at the end. Where did I move it to? I moved it to between the one and the eight. The exponent that we put right here is the number of places I moved the decimal. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 places. So that's where we got the 13 from. So step number one, write down the significant digits. Put the decimal in your number so that the mantissa is between one and 10. And then write times 10 to the, and then we ask ourselves, where did the decimal start? Where did it finish? Okay, where did it start at? Where did I put it? How many places is that? That's our exponent. So let's try a couple. So here we have three values that I would like for you to write in scientific notation. So step number one, find the number of significant digits we have. We have four and five, so 45. We write that down. We put a decimal in this number so that its value is between one and 10. So my decimal is going to go between the four and the five. Then we write times 10. And now we ask, okay, where was the decimal? It was here at the end. Where did I want it between the four and the five? How many places is that? Well, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 places. So times 10 to the 11th. Pause the video and you try the other two on your own. Okay, let's see how you did. Okay, so first, we write down the significant digits. Two, one, five. I put a decimal in this number so that its value is between one and 10. So it has to go between the two and the one. And what you'll find is it's always one number to the left of my decimal. And then times 10, and now we look. Where was my decimal? Where did I put it? How many places is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's times 10 to the eighth. Okay, now this last one is just kind of a silly one to show you that this works with any number. Okay, so we write our significant digits. In this particular case, we have four of them. Nine, five, four, six. We put our decimal in so that its value is between one and 10. So 
So it's going to go right there. And then so times 10. Now how many places did I move the decimal? It was here. I moved it here. So that's four places times 10 to the fourth. So that's how we change a standard numeral or standard number into scientific notation. Now, can we go the other direction? Okay, so let's see if we can. So these are in scientific form and I want to convert them to standard notation. Now we know that this exponent on the 10 tells me how many places to move my decimal. It does not tell me how many zeros to add to my number. It tells me how many places I move my decimal. Now, if we're multiplying by 10, it's going to move the decimal one place. So if I were to take the number five and multiply this number by 10, it's going to give me 50, which basically took the decimal right here and moved it one place. Now, if I multiply it by two tens or five times 10 squared, it's going to give us 500. So it will take that decimal and move it two places. So for every 10 we have, it moves the decimal one place to the right. So with that in mind, I have 1.34 times 10 to the eighth. So what that times 10 to the eighth tells me is that I'm going to multiply this number right here, 1.34 by 10 or by eight tens. So that means I'm gonna move my decimal eight places to the right. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now for all the empties, I add zeros. So my standard numeral will be one, three, four, zero, 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 zero. Throw in your commas for good measure to help us understand the number and we have our value. Okay, so pause the video and you do the other two by yourself. Okay, let's see how you did. Okay, so I've got 5.9 times 10 to the fifth. So this tells me move the decimal five places to the right. So here's one two, three, four, five. So how many extra zeros will I add? Four. So my number should be five, nine, zero, 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 zero. Okay. Now the last one is just another one of those to show you that it works with any numbers. Okay. So my 10 to the second says move the decimal two places. So one, two. So my answer should be seven, zero, three point two, four. So it does work with anything. So, so far we've learned how to Take a standard number that's a big number and convert it to scientific notation and a scientific number and convert it to a standard form. Now we've got one other type of scientific notation we got to deal with. What if I have numbers less than one? Okay. If we have numbers less than one, we do the same process, but instead of having a positive exponent, we're going to have a negative exponent. So in this number right here, I look at my 45, which is my significant digits. So 45. Again, I need to put a decimal in this number so that it's values between one and 10. So I put it right here and then times 10 to the, now again, I look at where was my decimal and where did I move it to? How many places is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places, but we moved it the opposite direction. So it's a negative eight. Okay. So let's try a couple of these. All right. So here we have, so step number one, find our significant digits, write the 34 down. I want my decimal so that we only have one number to the left of my decimal or the value of the numbers between one and 10. Okay. Then times 10. Now where it was my decimal and where did I move it to? So one, two, three, four, five, six places. So it's a negative six. Okay. So pause the video and you answer the other two by yourself. Okay. Let's see how you did. Okay. So in this one, we have three significant digits, three, zero, seven. So since I want my value to be between one and 10, I place the decimal between the three and the zero times 10 to the, and then where was the decimal? Where did I move it to? So we've got one, two, three places. So negative three. Okay. Then the last one, okay. I've got only one significant digit nine, and it is between one and 10. So my decimal would be right here at the end. So then times 10 and you can put the decimal or not. It's up to you. Okay. And then I moved the decimal and how many places did I move it? Cause I started here and I moved it to here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 places. So negative 10. Okay. One last part. Okay. So here we did standard to scientific. So now we need to do scientific to standard.
<clears throat> okay, so if we've got a negative exponent, we need to remember that instead of moving the decimal to the right, making a big number, this one's going to be a number that's less than one. It's going to be a small number, so we move it to the left. So this one we would write 4.8, and I'd move the decimal left six places. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So how many extra zeros would I add? I would add five. So point zero, 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 four, eight. Okay, pause the video and you work the other two. Okay, let's see how you did. So this first number, we've got 2.456 and I've got times 10 to the negative fourth, which means I'm gonna move the decimal to the left four places. One, two, three, four. So we end up with 0 0 0 0.0002456. Right. Now, on the last one, we've got nine. Now, where is that decimal in that nine? The nine is right here. So it says move it seven places to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means I'm gonna have 0 0.0000009. Right. Six zeros in the nine. So we've looked at four things today. We've looked at how to change a standard number into scientific if it's a big number, and scientific back to standard if it's a big number. We've learned about standard if it's a number less than one, how to turn it into scientific notation. And if it's in scientific notation with a negative exponent, we know that the value is gonna be less than one. And that's how you do scientific notation. Until next time.